So very good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my name is Ron Maycock. I am the owner of Action Coach Castleford and Business Performance UK. And I'm delighted to be joined today and this afternoon by Michael Lawrence. Uh, very good afternoon to you, Michael. How are you doing? Very well, thank you, Rob. Nice to be here. Fantastic. Well, it's, it's great to have you with us. Uh, Michael is the Managing Director of Target Components, um, and we'll be hearing a lot more from him and all about Target Components in just a few moments. Before we do that, though, I just wanted to explain what the purpose of these interviews actually is. We're surrounded by some amazing businesses in our area. Uh, they've each got their own journeys uh, to, to, to sort of share. They've got the successes that we, we like to expand on. And we actually share those stories all in the, uh, in the purpose of abundance. The more is more, the more people who get to hear about the achievements of these businesses, the more success that that will uh, build into the economy. And it is for the, uh, the sort of benefit of businesses all over the UK, not just in the Yorkshire area as well. We also go international. If you've seen that on, on YouTube, uh, there's quite a few of the spotlight interviews that are actually coming uh, from the, the, the US as well. So there is international exposure that we get from these. But it is also that we can uh, highlight what what's actually going on in these different businesses and how that can benefit other people. So without further ado, uh, Michael, tell me a bit more about Target Components. Yeah, Target Components are uh, an IT distributor uh, based in Castleford. We actually celebrate our 25th year in operation this year. Uh, we focus primarily on hardware and software distribution, um, primarily to uh, business to business, um, but we sell to a range of uh, customers uh, whether it be resellers, uh, either online or physical uh, retailers who are our primary customers, but we support as well end user businesses as well. Fantastic. And what's your role within all of that? So my role is managing director. I joined Target in March of last year. I've just celebrated my first anniversary. Uh, and I sit as one, thank you. And I sit as one of the uh, one of the owners of Target as well, although we do operate a, an employee owned trust model as well, which is, is something really interesting for us to talk about. Fantastic. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get on to that. So you said that the, the the model is to resellers, to business to business and others. So what what is the main model that you're doing when you say it's a distribution of? Um, are you uh, tapping into people from all over the world in terms of your suppliers and then redistributing or is it UK only? What, what What's your sort of operating model? Yeah, so primarily we're a distributor uh, of, ex of existing established brands and then some of our own brands as well. Uh, we're a good importer. We bring a number of our own brands uh, into the market, which primarily we source from, uh, from the Far East. Um, we also uh, work with established brands across uh, America, Europe, the UK as well. Uh, and we try and bring um, a, a real spread of, of offers to uh, our customer base. And we find that for us, some of our smaller independent shops, particularly our own brand range, is very successful there because it's a, it hits a certain price point for them. Um, and we do really well with um, some of the larger branded suppliers in the market as well, either as a direct distributor to market or in some cases as a sort of an, an approved reseller or approved sub distributor. So is it product centric? So you're doing hardware and some software or do you, do you provide service as well and IT services? Yeah, so we're in, in sort of the strictest sense, we're primarily a hardware and software distributor. Uh, hardware being in the form mainly of, of components, software be it with working with Microsoft or Norton would be uh, sort of the biggest. In terms of services, not, not offering services in the sense of a, an MSP within our industry, but we offer a range of services uh, to try and be that sort of value added distributor. In this day and age, moving a box is, is the green fee. That's the mm -hmm. minimum that, that everyone expects in terms of low, low errors and, and, and shipping next day, uh, right time in, uh, on time and in full. Uh, but we offer a range of services to try and make our customers uh, more successful, uh, really focused on um, flexible product data feeds. We have a, what we call an in-store PC builder, which is really cool functionality where our customer's customer can go into their store, build their own customized PC through our customer's uh, website, place the order, which comes straight through to Target. We build the PC on site and then ship it out uh, on a, a sort of white label basis. So from our customer's perspective, it looks like they've got this expanded custom builder PC service, and that's fueled by sort of the innovation and service that Target provide. 
So are you getting involved with data centers and and that kind of thing, or is it it tends to be? So when you said the MSP, the MSP typically would be one of your customers, customers. that would come to you to say, okay, we're needing multiple sources of, of different things. But you're not necessarily going in at that infrastructure level. You're leaving that to other people. No, we do have a, a an arm of our business called Service Plus, and Service Plus do focus on sourcing more servers, obviously, but also then more sort of enterprise hardware, uh, which does tend to take us more into still into into businesses, but can be to some of those end users. But we're obviously very mindful of the fact that we don't want to compete with our own with our own customers. So typically, yeah, yeah. the the typical MSP to us would be our our target customers, and we work with many of them across across the whole of the UK. No, it's interesting. And 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 you said that uh, Target has moved to an employee ownership model as well. So just tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so Target's always been privately owned, uh, previously 50-50 owned by our two main shareholders. And then as part of their exit strategy from the business, we created an employee owned trust, which was June of last year. And it's it, it, employee ownership is, a, is an ownership model. Um, but actually, it's the culture that we create around that employee ownership, which actually really, I think, differentiates us. So we've always shared profits. We've increased the amount of profits that we share. But essentially, we've built a, a culture and environment where everybody at Target feels like they have a say in, the, in, in an involvement in the success of the business. And that comes from sort of what we do on a day to day basis all the way through to sort of share, sharing profits as an output of the of the end result. And how are you finding that? So you, you said it's a, a, it's been a transition into the different ownership model. Um, what have you seen change? You, you mentioned the culture, but what else have you sort of seen change in that time since fundamentally people now are they've got a, they've got skin in the game. It, mm. they, they've got a vested interest that this is successful. So what else is uh, is sort of changing? I suppose, or or has changed significantly. So there's probably two things. First, I would say is engagement is up. Uh, we run a staff survey, and the, the results of the survey tell us that we have a more engaged workforce. Um, and I think that that's in part because of the employee ownership. Uh, I think it's because of the way in which we've embedded it. And I just think our transition as a, in that kind of ownership journey has actually been um, relatively simple once you get through the the legal the legal paperwork. Because actually, as a business, we've always kind of had that those kind of values and that kind of style of working and sharing uh, of profits. But I think the biggest thing that's probably changed is that real sense of ownership. We've had um, simple examples where you'll hear somebody say, actually, I don't want to spend that money because it, it's my money. Or I don't want to give away that product because I'm giving away my own my, my own money and you always have this mantra that says well would you spend it if it was your own money and I think a lot of big businesses try and sort of embody this to try and ensure that you're spending shareholders money uh, really effectively and yet for us it, it, we really do live it and breathe it because we know that everything that we that we make ultimately goes back into that sort of profit share pot uh, that's shared among the staff and then the rest we reinvest back into the business to hopefully grow even further. It's almost uh, I, I, I guess it's almost the, the the plus side of in different models where you've got a private uh, private equity or you've got some kind of invest investor the plus side is yes they provide the money the downside is they sometimes are quite intrusive in terms of looking at how you're spending their money and therefore what their ROI is likely to be it's great that the employees are now starting to think about this and going actually is this a viable decision or are we are we basically being a little bit subservient in this and just giving away stuff for, for the sake of it? So it's, it's interesting how it's changing that sort of dynamic in terms of how people feel that they can input to the running of a business. Um, you know, that's, that, that, that's really good. So a few years ago and, and prior to you joining uh, uh, Target, um, we were obviously all subject to lockdown. You're you're part of an, an integral part of one of the supply chains um, within business to business and things like that. So, what sort of it, I'll call it almost like a hangover. What what's been adopted since any changes that were made that were forced on us that you're now going actually that has fundamentally changed how we operate and that's for the better. So, is there anything that you've adopted since? these forced changes that you think, yeah, I'm glad in a weird way that that actually happened. 
Yeah, there's probably two answers to that. I think from a from a from from an internal perspective, in terms of how we work, we adopted a hybrid working policy, which has stuck for us um, post lockdown. Our particular model is we do three days in the office and we do two days, which we offer as as flexible as, as flexible working. And our team's feedback is that that balance of the three and two works really well for them. Particularly, I think in some of the analytical teams where they say, actually, I'm doing a piece of work. I need to think this through. I don't necessarily want the distraction. That hybrid working's worked worked well. On the external facing side, in terms of how we interact with customers, we've introduced a, sort of a customer pickup service. So we we essentially are a, a warehouse facility with uh, with, a, with an office, um, but we do allow customers to come to the warehouse doors and pick up. And it's something we started during COVID, which worked for some of our customers. And obviously, there's an economic benefit in terms of the saving on, on freight cost and charges.